fact to follow. But first of all, let's just note, Black Lives Matter said, all lives matter, and she was sincere and she meant that. So let me say, no, I don't recommend her, Black Lives Matter. Because clearly, police brutality, racist motivated police brutality has to stop. And you know what, I, I want to say real quick on that point, that I'm impressed, I'm impressed with the, the moral maturity of a movement calling for reforms in the, in the policies of the way black people are treated by police and, 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 and into the police violence. That's not a radical message like the kind that Trump paints it as some kind of a racial separatist message. It's not at all. It's a message that said stop the, the violence, stop the attacks, the systematic policy of killing our youth. That's really mature. That is something that should be honored. And the fact that it's not being recognized is part of a deep moral crisis in this country. A country led by a habitual liar. Because Trump is an habitual liar. He's a chump, he's a bully, and he's a thug. That's right. And every time he speaks, he talks about legality and laws. He's attacking and chewing up and trashing all the values and rights that the laws that we fought for over generations, such as, for example, the 14th Amendment, right? He trashes them, he tears these apart. Because it is not criminal to seek refugee asylum. For refugees to seek asylum, this is not criminal at all. In fact, it is their legal right to do so. It is an international law, and it is in our own constitution. We ha they have that right to seek asylum. So, Trump, you're wrong in that, but well, you're lying. He knows, he doesn't care, he lies. He's an habitual liar. So, we, we have a country led by an habitual liar, and his party, let's be frank, because I'm glad to hear how much the last two speakers, you know, they, they name things clearly, you know, imperialism, war, capitalist exploitation. Let's be clear about this. The base of the Republican Party, the part of it that's controlling the movement at party is fascist. It is fascist. They want blood. Those pipe bombs weren't an accident. It wasn't some freak event. They're fascists. We're seeing fascism in this country. It's a native fascism. It has its own language and discourse. It doesn't sound like Hitler exactly, but it's crazy, it's wacky, and they are determined to be, bring violence to our country. We're facing a, a severe crisis that's only going to deepen. So that anybody thinks that somehow we can just keep back and hunker down and shelter and we'll survive this and get through this is truly mistaken, right? Let's. Let's recognize the courage of Northwest Indiana Resist for organizing this rally and bringing us together. This is leadership. And they're focused on a fight that really matters locally. They're saying there is this fight. We have to stop the deportations at the Gary Airport. And, and they've been working with people like uh, the, Mr. Estrada, you know, and with other groups to, to get local resolution. So win these local fights. This, this is really important. These are symbolic efforts, but they're also meaningful directly, immediately to people here locally. Laurel talked about local fights. These are all very important. But nationally, we've got a severe crisis because we've got this habitual liar who's leading demagogically a fascist movement that threatens terrorist violence against Latinos, against Muslims, against black youth. They are leading that threat. And the alternative we have is, unfortunately, well, let's think about it. Let's name, let's name some things really clearly here. Under Mr. Obama and Ms. Clinton, there was a dictatorship installed in Honduras. It was a coup d'etat that carried out that they supported. So we can't, tell it. we cannot accept that kind of crap anymore. You can't tell us, yeah, we're the alternative to the fascists, but we promote coups in Honduras. That doesn't work. That doesn't work for us. That's not an alternative. So we have a severe crisis here and this crisis is only going to deepen because the one side wants blood. They are fascists, they want blood. And on our, on our side, we have a leadership that keeps trying to find some deal. It's gonna work out a deal with them. There's no deal to be worked out with the fascists. Right. When Morell says fight back, that's fight right, back. we're in a fight. Fight back. We, we have to fight. <laughs> fight. And if we give here, we're gonna keep going and we will be in a corner. Now, as a white working man, I'm going to talk to other white working men, and I'm going to tell you guys something. Those of you who voted for Trump, well, you know, there's the story, uh, Bertolt Brecht told, hey, there's a communist for you, Bertolt Brecht, playwright, play, look him up. He tells a story about the goat who's talking to the other farm animals, goats in the pen. It says, you know what, the other day a strong man came to me and said he's going to let me out of the pen. And the cow sat and thought for a second and said, yeah, that would be the butcher.
<laughs> because, folks, Mr. McConnell said exactly what the agenda is coming up if the Republicans take the House and the Senate, and that is to gut Social Security and gut Medicare, and they are fully intending to collect. If they win, they will collect. So, the problem here is that so many, because let's face it, there is a white privilege, a white, white man. I grew up in the region too. I grew up working man, and I got a job in the union. I got my union card, and I live a little better than many, many other working people. That's just straight up truth. That's the benefit of having a union. But they aren't, not everybody's organized in unions anymore. Unions are smaller and smaller. They keep, you know, they just get smaller and smaller. We only defend little, little, smaller, smaller groups of people and leave out larger and larger groups of people. Well, when they start cutting Social Security and Medicare, when they allow the waters to be poisoned, right? When they send our sons and daughters off to wars because they're coming. The war on terror that's been going on for 16 years hasn't stopped. Anybody notice it's still going on and it's going to get worse if Trump declares war on Iran, which he wants to. That's why he's sticking with Saudi Arabia no matter what. They want a war, a big one. They want a really big war. And that's going to be a lot of blood. Like I said, they want blood. They want nothing less than a whole lot of blood. These people are obsessed with repression and terror and killing. And we are in a bad spot. We are in a bad spot. We've got to fight back. That surely is true. We have got to fight back. We have got to fight back. And the fight does begin with elemental civil liberties and rights, right? You do not break up families, right? I just read that in Detroit, this is, this is disgusting, well, Detroit's bankrupt. So anybody who falls behind on their water payments, of course, is in a spot because the city is immediately going out there and shutting off the water for these families. And, ho, 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 CPS is being called on those families. You don't have water in your house, you can't keep your kids. This is uh, an article that just came out in these times. They're taking the children from these families. Not only didn't you not pay your water, you don't get any water, but we'll take your kids from you to boot. And that is a black community, by the way. That is an attack on those black families. The fact that we could be raising our military expenditures to the point that we're going to run a deficit, a deficit near a trillion dollars, whilst Detroit goes broke and families lose their children and their waters are shut, their water is shut off. This tells you everything about the kind of country we're allowing to take, to, 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 to be our, our home. This is not acceptable. This is unacceptable. This is a moral struggle for the most elemental rights. Water, breathable air for our children, for our schools. And yes, for Social Security and health care for our union jobs. I don't know how it is we got to a point where our communities are are so beaten down perhaps with fear because of the the drudgery of life because it can be miserable you know you work long hours you come home you're tired you're exhausted i don't know how it is we got to that point where we can't mobilize huge numbers right away in response to these attacks we're going to have to figure out how to overcome that problem we definitely are but you know what it isn't just our problem here locally munster has got problems with their schools too rural indiana is not like living in paradise, their schools are under attacks too. There's, they, they talk about high employment indices, but we know the wages are low. We know these jobs don't have benefits. These people are feeling pain too. They're in this fight with us, they just don't realize it. And we're up against a really nasty message from Trump, because what Trump and his people are saying with Make America Great Again, is they're saying, I've got tickets for lifeboats. Of course, I'm going to be in the captain's seat, but you want to be in this lifeboat with me, don't you? Kanye West, or whoever he's talking to when he gives out that ticket for the life boat. That's what he's saying. You can save yourself if you hook up with me, and we'll let the world drown, because the oceans are rising, right? And this is, this is, this is the, the nature of the moral, this is a moral collapse, a moral collapse, and we are in a profound problem. We, this crisis is not going to get any, it's not going to go away, right? There was, there was a time before, before the Civil War when there were a lot of politicians saying, well, we, we, could, we could avoid that war with the South. We can cut some kind of deal. And they kept trying to figure out how to avoid it. It wasn't going to go away. It happened. That war came. And when you listen to what these people on the right wing are talking about, they're talking about war and blood. And that's very scary. We do have to fight for these minimum rights. We have to fight for legality and civility, but we can't step back from what they're threatening us with. All right.
Thank you for your time. Thank you.